I don't mind flight disruptions. They happen. I, I Cancellations happen. Uh, delays happen. I am not a traveler that gets upset about that. What irritates and frustrates me is lack of communication and lack of ability to speak with a human. Just gotta ignite the light and let it shine. Just own the night like the fourth of July. Kirby, you're a firework. <laughs> Come on, show them what you're worth. And that is how we are going to horribly sing and start <laughs> off episode number 209 of the Promo Upfront podcast. I am one of your hosts, Bill Petrie. With me as always, it's the Field Marshal of the Firecracker, the Brigadier General of the Black Cat, the Rear Admiral of the Roman Candle, the Staff Sergeant of the Sparkler himself, the mm. one and only Maybe Kirby Hossman. Kirby, how the hell are you? Happy Fourth of July. Happy Independence Day, my friend. Yeah, no, thank you. And that was a very aggressive. I mean, I was you really took on a, a, a pretty difficult song there. So kudos yeah, to that you. Was, that was unfortunate for everybody. <laughs> it's great. You did a great job. And, you know, this is uh, we're, we're, we're hitting that midway through the year. And so I get excited about that. And so things have been actually fairly busy here as we started off July, which I love. And so, yeah, things are pretty good, buddy. And uh, I'm super curious. It's good to see you again. It's good to be seen. <laughs> uh, been gone for was gone out of the country for uh, 18 days. Glad to be back. Uh, a little tired, kind of re-entry, and I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit about that at some point, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as, as I was thinking about uh, coming back and I was thinking about, man, I, I miss the world of, mm. of branded merchandise. I miss the world of promotional products. I miss the world of marketing and branding, what you and I live and breathe every single day, as well as all four of our listeners. And that got me to thinking as I was on a 43-hour journey home. It got me to thinking, I don't. Everybody's looking for completely kick-ass merchandise, right, Kirby? You know what I'm talking about. It's the type of merchandise that elicits that wow and aha moment that we love to get from clients. You know what I'm thinking, right, Kirby? I do. I do. Those are the ones that stand out. They're, they're not just out of the box. They're off the wall. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Kirby, wow, you did it again. Look no further than our friends over at Seven Sourcing because they are the experts in the field. They work with distributors to help them source custom orders directly from fully vetted overseas factories. And they do that without having to deal with the factory themselves. They get the distributor out of that uh, process, which is really awesome. Seven Sourcing has a very strong pedigree when it comes to navigating direct custom merch sourcing as their team has over a quarter century of successful importing experience. And even better, Kirby, they work directly with each distributor on brand strategy, product development, product sourcing, order management, quality control, compliance, and logistics. In other words, they completely demystify direct custom sourcing. And while they source merchandise at the lowest possible cost, they won't sacrifice quality or safety to meet price points. Seven Sourcing isn't interested in meeting expectations, Kirby. They only strive to exceed them. And that's really where it comes from with Russ Mogell and his team. You know what I'm talking about. I do. Actually, it was funny. I was having lunch with another distributor just like last week. And uh, this distributor was frustrated with uh, doing stuff overseas. And so I literally introduced Russ to him immediately. Like I left the the, the lunch and said, you need to, you need to um, meet Russ Mogel. So um, yeah, not only is it one of those people I call, but I, whenever the people are struggling, I want to introduce them as well. No, I couldn't have said it better myself. Plus, this week is his birthday. So why not reach out to Russ, give him a nice right. birthday present of a giant flipping order that's going <laughs> to wow and bowl over your clients. Uh, it. You know, yeah, it's going to take a little bit longer. It's about an average 75 days. But isn't that extra planning worth it to get that wow moment? Kirby and I sure as hell think so. So when you're ready to turn your idea, I don't know, into something more, into something that's truly truly becomes iconic, reach out to Russ over at 7Sourcing, sales at 7Sourcing.com. You're not going to be sorry you did. Now, Kirby, I want to thank you for having the courage 
to a podcast with me today after laying off for a few weeks, you could have said, you know what, Bill, I've really enjoyed not podcasting with you every week. So uh, I think we're done with the promo from podcast, <laughs> but you haven't done that yet. So now we're back on the train. Let's get right to it. I have the upfront portion of the podcast. Now, one of the things I noticed when I came back, um, mm -hmm. I was doing some research uh, for this podcast, and I don't know if you're aware of this. PPAI has relaunched their website. Have you hmm. seen it? I have not. I have not. This is okay. brand new information for me. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a huge upgrade. And for those of us who have used the PPAI, PPAI website, either for research purposes, for news gathering or news and information about the industry, or even just trying to find other services and things that are germane to the promotional products industry, it's it's a much better navigation. It's mm. much easier to find something. It has a really super clean look. Now, uh, I I I kind of possibly you know thought this might be coming for a while, but I think and this is really what I want to talk about because you haven't seen the website. I don't no, I'm literally looking at it right now. I like pulled yeah. it up as okay. you told so me. So you're looking at it right now. It's you can see it's new. It's refreshed. Very mm -hmm. clean. They've done a hell of a good job. No question there. Uh, Anything's been an upgrade over the, the previous site, which is a little clunky. Things were difficult. It's just older. That happens with websites yeah. from time to time. What I it, what I am, am want to talk about is there was no announcement. There was no, mm. hey, we've relaunched the website. Mm. Now, I have thoughts about that, and I'd like to know if you do. So uh, I'll go with mine if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. I think that's an enormous missed opportunity. Mm. Um, as a as a organization that lives and breathes to serve its paying membership, which you are, I am, mm -hmm. I think all four of our listeners are also PPII members. I want to know what the association is doing with that membership money. Of course, I know that they put on fantastic events. Of course, I know that they do a fantastic job uh, uh, advocating for the industry. I know they do an outstanding job in media and things like that. But I think when there's an investment, or in this case, maybe a reinvestment in one of the biggest assets, at least front-facing assets that the association has, which is this website, I think personally, that's a missed opportunity to really broadcast that, mm -hmm. hey, here's where things are. Here's what we've done. Here's why we've done it. And this is an investment on behalf of you, our membership. Because they didn't do that, I think it's going to possibly... Un and unintentionally create friction as people go try to find things. All of a sudden, things are way different. Mm -hmm. We talked a couple of weeks ago about sometimes updating apps on our phone unintentionally creates friction. Right. I think this is one of those possible po uh, times where because membership wasn't informed by, by email, by, by social media post, by even an article, um, I think it creates friction because it's just change that it feels forced as opposed to I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. Am I off base here? The train's coming through, so I apologize for that. There's no no avoiding it. Um, oh, so, I can keep talking. No, it's I, all right. I, I can keep talking. It's all right. So um, what I would say is because I don't know, I have one question before I tell you my opinion. Yeah. When did it happen? Do you know that? Sometime over the past week and a half. Okay. So, okay. So my only ca caveat to this, because that was initially my thought. I was like, how did I not know about this mm -hmm. update? The mm -hmm. only caveat I'd give is, hey, we want to get it out there and make sure that it's not going to blow up. Like, it, like, literally, I just launched a new website myself, right? And I made an announcement and then I sent it out to somebody. And they're like, hey, it's not working, <laughs> right? Like, so that happened yesterday for me. And so if they put it out there to go, okay, we're going to soft launch this and then make the announcement in a couple of weeks, I, I at least understand because it is a big undertaking. Um if that's not the case, then yes, I 100% agree. Probably not for the same reasons, though. You're saying, hey, it's a, um, you like it could create friction. For me, I think it's just a missed opportunity to tell about a positive thing that's oh. going on. Like, like hey, yeah. look at us being cutting oh. edge. Look at us driving the conversation. So, so yes, I, I think it is a missed opportunity. And But the good news is it's not gone forever. I mean, they can literally do this next week or whatever and make a big deal. So that was my main point is the missed opportunity. From yeah. a, we, we want to show you where your money is being invested. That, yeah. That's the main missed opportunity. The, there's a potential for friction. I don't think it's a huge one. Yeah. Um, where I will push back on you is I do think the moment's lost um, in, in, a, in a very big way. If, you know, I understand, you know, th things are never perfect. You and I've talked about things are never mm -hmm. perfect. 
I guarantee you that there was beta testing. There were people testing sure. it. You know, you know, when you build a website, you do everything you can to try to break it before you launch it, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, I've launched websites and I thought they were, they were, uh, you know, ready to go and something's broken on them. Something doesn't work. That's not the user's fault. That's my fault. Mm -hmm. Just like with your website, you know, your, your speaking website that you launched recently, you thought everything was good. You, I'm sure you had people internally over there at Hassman Marketing, check it, recheck it. People outside your company, hey, can you just look at this? Taste? And, you know, things happen. There's, that's called human error and that's okay. I think the bigger issue here is, you know, I know there's a big movement at PPAI to really provide membership value mm -hmm. to communicate and drive that. That's where I think the missed opportunity was. Kudos to PPAI for investing the whatever that was to invest. I'm sure it was a lot to redo the website. I, I think it looks great. And I'm yeah. sure there's more to follow. I just think you have to toot your own horn sometimes, especially when, you know, there's two main revenue drivers at PPAI. Number one is the uh, the bake sale, right? PPAI Expo is a huge revenue driver. And the other one is membership fees. Membership, yeah. And they've they've redone, they, they broadcasted how we're redoing membership fees. That's fantastic. I really think it would have been in their best interest to broadcast this as well. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But I'm not wrong on this one. Hey, yeah, I don't think you're wrong on this one. The only good, again, I think this is where we might have a little bit of a, is I don't think it's too late. I, I don't think the, the moment has passed. Um, I think that, that they could do an article. They could be, because again, other than the us two and the four listeners that, that you've mentioned, um, people still don't know. So if they, they could put it out there, yeah. it's still new information. So I, I like it though. Looks good at a glance. All right. Uh, so that, that's great. We can move on. So one okay. quick thing I want to mention here. Hey, did you know the people over at Promocations have launched their 2025 event calendar? That's right. There's going to be three events next year. There's going to be a uh, fourth promo cruise, and that is going to be March 9th through the 16th, leaving out of Tampa. And then there's going to be Promocations' first land-based event, and that's going to be in Los Cabos, Mexico. Oh. And that's open to everybody. If you are a supplier distributor, it's it's open to really everybody to, to do that event. And that's going to be uh, late July in 2025. Want to learn more? Of course you do. Head over to promocations.com, click on that events page, and you can get all the information that you want to hear and read about, about those amazing promocations events. All right, Kirby, you got a topic for us? Yeah. So I, again, I think it leads nicely from this is that, you know, yeah. we, obviously promocations is is happening. You're tied to it. I'm, I've been on it. It's awesome. Um, but you just took a big trip. And so I, I know it's, you know, this isn't a necessarily a business topic, but I just, it, I, I'm curious. We didn't really talk much about it before we went live yeah. We hit record. And so how'd it go? Give us a, you don't have to give us like a, the, the big long winded yeah. version, but just tell how to go, man. Tell me about it. It was horrible. Every <laughs> bit of it. Um, no, it was an amazing trip. You know, um, there's two types of vacations, Kirby. Mm -hmm. There's the vacation where you, I am going to just do nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to recharge. I'm going to relax. I'm going to just chill because mm -hmm. I need that. Yep. And then the other type of vacation is I'm going to run so ragged. I can have a great time, but I'm going to need a vacation from my vacation when I get home. Yep. We did the latter. Yeah. But I'm okay with that. Um, so I'll go very briefly what it was. We uh, went on a uh, European trip, uh, Sandy and I, and then uh, met up with uh, several other couples uh, on the uh, uh, at the cruise ship. So we spent four days in Rome before we boarded our uh, celebrity cruise ship, which is one of the nicest experiences I've ever had. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a floating resort, much nicer than now there's nothing wrong with a carnival or Royal Caribbean, but it's definitely uh, an upgrade. <clears throat> and then from there we went, um, to Naples, Santorini, the Amalfi coast, all through Greece, Athens, Mykonos. Um, we hit, uh, Turkey, we hit Malta on the way home. And, uh, then we spent a couple days in Barcelona, so overall, it was a it was a sixteen day trip, uh, but we did the extended dance match into eighteen because uh, we had some travel challenges coming home, uh, as is want to happen. Yeah, uh, but it was a fantastic trip, and it was one of those trips, Kirby, where 
you know, those type of trips where you end up meeting with other couples on, you know, it can go one of two ways. One is, man, I, this was not a great idea. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun, but I've had enough and I need distance. Yep. Been on those. This one went the other, this one went, the, I've been on those too. Mm. And this one absolutely went the other way. Uh, lifelong friendships were absolutely forged on mm. the way on there, there. It was, it was amazing. I, every day was better than the day before. Wow. Um, I, I, it was the most life affirming vacation I think I've ever had. And I think Sandy would, would say the same. And I haven't laughed that hard that consistently for that long, I don't think ever. That's and awesome. I'm not trying to overestimate what the vacation was or what it meant, but it was truly phenomenal. Mm. Um, and so it was great, hard coming home. I'm yeah. still on uh, uh, Barcelona time, which is about eight hours ahead of, of where I'm at. <laughs> so I'm still getting up at 3.30 in the morning and <laughs> I could either lay there and try to go back to sleep, but I'm not. So yeah. I just get up and start working at 3.30 in the morning. And then I stop when I stop, you know, coming home the, a week where it's a little low key because it's uh, Independence Day week. Uh, it does help quite That's a worked, bit, yeah. um, but it was a great trip. Um, you know, and so that leads me actually into, uh, I have two topics. Can, okay. so that, that, I mean, what are the questions you want to ask about? The no, it's good. That's good. That's good. Yes. everything i mean a i've been followed it. i've ever seen i followed it on facebook by the way i thought you did a great job documenting it. so it was like every day you were probably posting toward the end of your day i'm guessing yeah. and then i uh, saw it was actually it as... the beginning of the next day is oh, that okay because of the time change yeah okay so but i i would I wake up and see the the highlights sort of pictures and that was cool so thanks for doing that you know it's funny i did that really for me um, mm -hmm. yeah, I want to remember this next year and I'll remember one. So I actually, I glad everybody else loved it. And, and, you know, I, I'm sure it wore people out after a while. I, it would have me. Um, but no, thank you. I'm glad you followed along. So it leads me into a couple topics that I want to share. One is travel on the way home. We flew Delta, which, uh, I don't fly very often, so I don't have status. Mm -hmm. uh, our connecting flight in JFK was canceled and led to just a comedy of errors, which I, I'm not sure I really, anybody wants me to go into, um, but I'll, I'll do a broad thing. And I want to talk about this. And then I have something else I'd like to talk about. Okay, sure. I am a seasoned traveler, as are you. Mm -hmm. And I understand things happen. So when we landed in uh, at JFK from Barcelona, got a message your connecting flight has been canceled and I was automatically rebooked on a flight the following day mm, on Monday. Wow. I, wow. I landed at noon at JFK on Sunday. So we were rebooked on a flight Monday flying to Austin and overlay uh, and, and I had a layover for four and a half hours and then fly to Nashville, which is ridiculous, right? I mean, that makes yeah, you no could sense drive it. Whatsoever. You could drive it in that amount of time. Correct. So get off the plane as we're trying to clear customs or in the cust line to clear customs and, you know, get back in the United States, trying desperately to call someone from Delta or message someone. And they have seemingly put so many roadblocks in to mm -hmm. talk to a human. I couldn't talk to anybody. So I, I rebooked the flight because I didn't have a choice. So we get out of security. Our bags are off the carousel, which or on the carousel, which we didn't know what was going to go on. I was supposed to go on our connecting flight. I don't know what, what happened there. So we were told to go to the rebooking center. Well, we go to the rebooking center. There's conservatively, I'd say about 45 people in line because this was happening to other people as well. Delta was having whatever issues they were having. There was one agent there. And we stood in line for 30 minutes. And the only reason we moved up and advanced in line was because people kept dropping out. Yeah, they they were talking to the same, the, the agent was talking to the same couple for a half hour. Now I probably would have stood in that line three, four hours before I ever got up there. So we finally bailed, said, this is the best we can do, but I didn't give up. And I kept calling and trying numbers and trying texts. Long story short, finally got in touch with somebody um, and was able to, all I wanted to do is get to Atlanta. That's a hub for Delta. It's four hour drive for me from, uh, from uh, Atlanta to uh, Nashville and I know there's going to be all manner of options in Atlanta where there's not in Austin and was able to finally do that. And it's one of those examples of, you know, not using humans. There's no, it makes no sense to fly someone from New York to halfway across the country to Austin, then to fly them back. It made much more sense to go to Nashville. 
I'm sorry to go to Austin, uh, uh, Atlanta. Atlanta than Nashville. And, and here's what I want to talk about. So I, that's the groundwork. I don't mind flight disruptions. They happen. I, I Cancellations happen. Uh, delays happen. I am not a traveler that gets upset about that. What irritates and frustrates me is lack of communication and lack of ability to speak with a human. Yeah. Am I wrong in getting, that's my frustration point, not the cancellation. Again, that happens. I don't know why. Could have been weather, could have been mechanical, could have been pilot. They couldn't get, I don't know. It doesn't matter. But the lack of communication really put a sour taste in my mouth about Delta. And I now believe it is the worst airline Mm -hmm. in the history of ever. And I'm not even getting all the baggage issues we had when we tried to recheck our bag. So what, 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 do you feel that way when it comes to communication, when things happen? It is, it is a thing that is, um, when you live through a a, a traumatic sort of travel experience like this, it becomes, um, even more obvious, but it is, we are living through a world right now where we, in the intention is good that we are trying to create optimized efficiency in every transaction, right? Like we've talked about, like, oh, we want to remove friction in any way we can. And that makes sense. Unfortunately, I feel like we've decided that human to human contact is friction. We have tried to eliminate that completely. Um, you and I've talked about this before. It's like in our office, once we get to three emails, I'm like, pick yeah. up the phone. It's just going to be quicker. Yeah. And it's funny because people push back. No, it won't be quicker. It for sure, without a doubt, will be freaking quicker. There's no question about it. And it's like, we have this conversation all the time. And I feel like now part of that is, you know, the pushback you're going to hear is nobody wants to work anymore. I'm not sure that's actually true. We, we, we overstate that, but it's like, boy, oh boy, in those moments when there's a heavy amount of um, friction for the traveler, it's like, right. That's where you want to see a company go. Okay. Boots on the ground. We got to get as many people there to fix this because we can take a bad situation and, and make it better or they can do what they did and make it worse. Yeah. And and that was, again, my friction point. I know I've had this happen with American Airlines, but I'm always able to get a human on the phone. Right. I don't mind the automatic rebooking. I get it. But the computer is just saying, we've got a lot of empty seats here. Let's move that person there, balance things out. There's no thought to the travel, actual travel disruption and what makes the most sense. Right. Um, and, and finally, the way I got it solved, Kirby, was text. It was a two-hour text conversation with mm-hmm. some clerk. I don't like texting as it is like that. I don't mind text for quick things, yeah. but something like that that's complex, and I'm trying to have lunch. I hadn't eaten. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And again, could have been handled in a five-minute phone call. Hey, I'm stuck in New York. Do you have any flights to Atlanta, and can I get to Nashville from Atlanta? You know, it just made all it made no sense the way they were bouncing people around. Yeah. And like I said, I won't even talk about the whole baggage issue because we got home about three thirty or four o'clock on Monday. My bags arrived sometime Tuesday morning at three in the morning. And, and what they said is, yeah, we'll, we'll just drop your bags off. We'll just leave them at your front door because I love my luggage being left at the front door at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been a complete shit show. But I wanted to, so I think the lesson here I take away is. You're right. We're, we're at this precipice of there's so much that can be done very well with automation. Simple, simple questions, yeah, simple, common questions. But when you know when there's an obvious friction point, you some really need that. to have yeah. You really need to have an availability of call call speak with someone. Yes, agreed. I, it just it was really thing. All right. The second thing I wanted to talk about is, and I think this is a little more bounce back and forth. This You do a lot of vacations, and I don't mean that in a crappy way, but you are very good about intentionally making sure you and Amy get away. Mm-hmm. Not something I've been great at over the past, I'd say, seven to 10 years, to be very candid. Yep. Now, this vacation has whetted my appetite, and I'm already starting to plan our next one. So Love it. that's Love a it. good thing. And the next one is not going to be running over, running from the Coliseum to the Parthenon. It's going to be some sort of Mexican all-inclusive where I'm just <laughs> sitting there chilling because I need that too. Fair. But I want to know, I, I have some thoughts on my re-entry. I want to ask about how you re- view re-entry when you come back from mm-hmm. a vacation, mm-hmm. getting back into the swing of things. I have some thoughts. So do you want me to go yeah. and share mine or do you want to go with yours? I'll give you mine right off the top of my head. because sure, and, and go ahead. So 
you mentioned about it. We are intentional about trying to get away. We almost like, as you've said, we've done both t- types of vacations where it's the run. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think back to the Disney vacation we did with the girls where it literally, I was right. so exhausted at the end of it that it was, it was tough. So I say that to say, we don't generally ever do those anymore. Like I was, right. I was exhausted watching yours. I thought it was awesome. And it, it inspired me to be like, oh, maybe we want to do another one of those again. However, right. when I go on vacation, like no is my default answer to do you wanna no Mm -hmm. i don't i want to i want to wake up i want to do what i want to do and most of the time that's sit by a pool have a cup of coffee or a beer and that's it and so that the reason that that is relevant to this is that usually when it's a good vacation like that i'm actually excited to re-enter like i i'm I'm like fired up to get back into it because I've recharged and right. done exactly that. Um, so it's different for you in this situation because that isn't what you did, yeah. right? Like it makes right. it harder. Um, now, I do think that you're one of the things I thought about was, okay, coming back during July 4th week is good for you. Um, but yeah, usually re-entry is pretty not easy for me, but um, yeah. it's it's not too bad because usually I'm kind of fired up to get back after it, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So you're right. Two different vacations. And we did have days where we just chilled on, you know, cruising the Mediterranean. There's nothing to do, but sit in a plunge pool and and have a couple cocktails or read a book and all that. So I planned very much for this week to be challenging on the front end before Mm -hmm. I ever left. I had things I had already done that I knew clients would need upon my return. So I had planned a lot of that. So a lot of things were just clicking and sending. Um, And I worked with my clients. I let them know, you know, when I'm coming back, when you, you know, I send, I think we've talked about, I have a habit of sending a weekly report to every client on Monday. I didn't do that over vacation. It's very rare that I do that, but I yeah. had everything planned out. Oh, I, I could not over communicate. So that helped. And then, like I t- spoke earlier, I just lean into what's going on right now. Yeah. I did not, you know, I'm adjusting to the time difference. Yeah. Um, it will tough. be a couple more days and I'll be fine. But I can, like I said, I can lay in bed at 3 30 in the morning, toss and turn and want to sleep and get frustrated or, I, I can tell I, I'm old enough to know when I'm not going back to sleep. <laughs> I come downstairs and it's amazing what I can get done from 3.30 to noon. Oh, yeah. And then I still have time in the day to do things. So that, that's that been real helpful. And the last thing is, you know, we talked earlier about the flight delay. I plan for bad shit to happen. Mm. Absolutely was prepared for it. So I am very much a planner. I think you might know this about me. So while we are supposed to be home Sunday around noon, um, I planned for bad things to happen. So there was no there was no real issue because those bad things happened. There was frustration for sure because you know at some point I just want to get home. Yeah, yeah. And I know you've been there too. 100%. But it wasn't, I didn't compound that by, holy crap, I didn't plan. And now because I'm not home, my yeah. clients are going to suffer or my business is going to suffer or I've in, added increased stress. So I also looked forward to coming back just because, okay, that was a great trip. I'm ready for my routine again. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I am. Yeah. So I, I think, for, you know, the advice I have was very similar to you. You know, when you come back, you have to, you want to look forward to coming back. You shouldn't dread coming back. Yeah. Same thing you and I talk about on Mondays. I don't think you and I ever dread a Monday in our life Mm. you and i love what we do it's fun to come to work i don't i don't break work and 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 play i like i love it all yeah um and what does gary v say if you know Mm -hmm. you uh live for the weekends your shit is broken same thing if you live for vacation and all that so i think just making sure you take care of not just everything leading up to it because i think we're all real frantic leading up to that vacation day yeah be a little more frantic and plan for the first few days after vacation. It makes reentry so much less overwhelming. Well, I'm yeah, Bill Petrie it, and I approve that message. Sorry about that. I didn't mean it, no. but I, I think it's, it goes back to also, we talked about this uh, in advance that I tend to check email. I tend to, and, and like, yep, I'll do all that stuff. That helps me not be like, oh, Absolutely. I've got 10,000 emails. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I've got, 
the yeah. normal hundred that I would have had had I not, you know what I mean? Cause I've at least gotten through this and I've assigned it to people. And um, so, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm with you. It, Don't get me wrong. There are times where it's like, okay, yeah. I got a couple of things stacked up, but usually sure. the re-entry and, and part of that's repetition, right? Like you mentioned, yep. we are intentional. So I've done it a few times and and that does make it right. Work. Well, and I did the same thing. I took a dedicated 10 minutes every day, a couple of times, just go through email because I can delete most of them. Yep. Uh, I, I, I do have an executive administrator who responded to a couple of things that clients needed. I just was aware of it. And then, so when I came home, there was about 10 emails I had to answer. That was it because yeah. I had been intentionally deleting them. And I did know I was going to have to work a little bit on the cruise ship, just little things that unfortunately have not been automated just because of the way the website is built and blogs sure. published, so on and so forth. But I just upgraded my internet, not because I want super fast internet all the time, because I knew I had to work. I wanted to get in and get, it get out. Yeah. I and I that. never worked more than 20 minutes during the course of each of the two weeks I was gone. That's I mean, awesome. It, so I really was able to unplug. So uh, it is being intentional. So uh, probably cool. a little too vacation heavy on this podcast, but no. uh, that's too bad. We're, ta um, we're talking about what's going on in our lives, brother. It's good. That's right. <laughs> One thing I wanted to mention, I actually meant to, meant to mention this during the uh, front portion of the podcast. Uh, last quick thing. I don't know if you saw this where Amy Rabideau has been hired by mm -hmm. Hit Promotional Products. I did see that. Uh, that's, that is one hell of a hire by John Norris and the team there. Uh, I don't know what big hit has cooking, but damn, you're bringing Amy Rabideau on from Facilis Group. That's pretty big shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, I, and that was one of the ones that was a headline that I, that caught my attention as well. And so I, yeah. and, and again, you and I love that. I, I, we don't generally talk about hirings and stuff like that, but mm. I, I'm fascinated when I see suppliers or distributors putting together teams that I admire. And so that's, that's a good one. Yeah. You know, we are not the promotional products uh, movement uh, podcast of record, Yeah, but this one is of note. And we've talked about super teams before we've talked about, you know, what HPG has done. We've yeah. talked about other companies and what hit is doing with John Norris, Amy Rabideau. They've got so many other great people there. CJ Schmidt has something cooking. I don't know what it is, but I bet it's something pretty big. It's cool. All right, man. Well, this was fun. All right. Speak. Yeah. Speaking of anything big, hey, you got a big idea for a client? How about turning that big idea into something maybe a little more? Something that's truly iconic? Well, we would strongly suggest you reach out to Russ Mogel and his team over at Seven Sourcing because they've completely demystified custom overseas sourcing and they are they are fully vet they work with fully vetted factories and they are going to help you uh really go they work with you on brand strategy product development product sourcing order management quality control compliance logistics like i said they demystify custom sourcing and they will absolutely create those wow and aha moments that will really make your clients sticky. They will really separate mm, you that. from the competition. So you want to turn something, a uh, great idea into something truly iconic? Email Russ Mogel and his team at sales at sevensourcing.com. Kirby, God bless you and God bless the USA.